Let's take a look at a USB rechargeable vibrating orange juicer from eBay because that's clearly what it's intended for because the picture on eBay shows an orange being juiced with the orange juicer with its 10 vibrating modes. Alternatively, you might find that this is literally a modern equivalent of those devices used in the Victorian era for receive, relieving uh, hysteria in ladies, whereby the lady would go to the doctor to have her hysteria relieved and the doctor would get her to lie on his couch and would then work the uh, hysteria down until it just popped out between her legs. Oh, most relieving, doctor. Thank you very much. That will be two shillings and sixpence, please. Anyway, this was fairly cheap, and I thought, that's great, because it usually means there's technical problems. And if I zoom down, because there is technical problems, this is USB rechargeable, and if I plug the charger in here, and plug the lead in here, and then plug it into charge, which you do by stuffing it through this little orifice here, which is presumably... Uh, just in case there's any seepage from the hysteria. When you plug it in there to charge, uh, it starts charging, but if you wiggle the lead at all, uh, it instantly shorts out the power supply. So that's not particularly ideal. Let's take a look inside. So I'll put this stuff out of the way before I blow up my USB power supply with this suspicious device. So I have it a preliminary exploration of this shiny dome here comes off with a lot of force. Let me just grab a slightly grubby pitch covered screwdriver and just pop that off, revealing that it's got these plastic catches here and an alignment pin. Then this very irritating, I'm going to have to get the pitch covered screwdriver in here again. This rubber sleeve then peels back. Oh, God, that is so tight. Mmm, tight. To reveal, that is, I mean, who puts this on the factory? Do they have a machine that does it? I'm not really sure. It reveals this plastic hub and then a big spring down there, which then goes on to the wibbly-wobbly head with the motor in it. Let us get the pitch-covered screwdriver out of the way. Marvel at the number of screwdrivers that actually landed on the floor when I disturbed that there. And we shall open this up. I wonder what size of cell it's got in it. And I wonder what the circuitry is. I wonder what it's using. Do you think it's using an LTH7? As many of them do. You can see the little button through here. A couple more screws down here. It's made in that classic cream plastic used in such things. I guess it's possibly cheaper than the... The premium plastic, I'm not really sure. It's a strange industry, a very lucrative industry, apparently. Okay, well, there's the cell. Is there any data in the cell? Is the cell stuck in? It's all wrapped in foam, but it's a sort of... It looks kind of double-ish sized. Hmm. Uh, there's the circuit board. And there's the connector. Uh, it's a separate connector. Oh, the springs come out and it's got these uh, braided wires. I guess that's just because the vibration would otherwise make things fall off. And in there I can see a fairly typical looking, uh, just a cheap motor. The little brushed motor in there. Okay, let's take the circuit board out and see what the circuitry's like. The real culprit here, assuming the rest of the circuitry is up to scratch, is that little connector over there. And it seems to be a separate connector. I thought it might be on the circuit board. Is this just going to pull out? Pull out, lol. Uh, there it is. There is the culprit that's shorting out. Having said that, it is an audio-style connector. And, you know, they're not great. It's very easy to short them out when you're plugging things in. They've never been good for, for power as such. What about the circuit board? It's very bare. Given it can't be a TP4056, because if it was a TP4056 charge chip, uh, it wouldn't have all those modes like that. Yeah, it's got lots of modes, including one that is suspiciously like SOS. I'm not sure you really want to start transmitting electrical interference with that. Yeah, anyway, how do you turn this off again? Press and hold. Yes. Right, tell you what. 
Let's take a look at the circuit board. I shall uh, reverse engineer this and we can see what this is because it's very minimalist, isn't it? I also want to run a charge test on it and see if it does cut off properly. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. And this is a weird little bit of circuitry. This chip is odd. It's got a quirk as well. So we have the USB supply come in. This is mirrored, by the way. So oh, I'll zoom down it. This is mirrored so on this side so that this overlays to that if you want to have a go at reverse engineering yourself. But this chip has the eight pins, but it's also got a pad underneath it. And that pad underneath is actually the one for switching the load for the motor. Um, it's got the incoming USB supply, has a little decoupling capacitor and goes to pin one, I'd guess. And it also goes to a potential divider that feeds into this pin, presumably for sensing that it is under charge. It has a decoupling capacitor on the output to the battery, and it charges the battery at a fixed current of 400 milliamps, which is kind of a bit high because that fairly large-ish cell was only 200 milliamp power. It's got the button, it's got a resistor and sears the LED, and it's got a protection diode for uh, back EMF, well, back transient spikes from the motor when it turns off. Uh, anything else? This mystery 1K, uh, 10K resistor here, uh, I'm not sure what that does. I tested a couple of things. Let me show you the schematic. This will make it clearer-ish. I'll get a bit closer again. I'll just put a big question mark in here. I don't know what that chip is. It might be a combined microcontroller and charger that could find use in orange juicer or hysteria relief devices, but also possibly as flashlight control chip. I don't know if this is just dedicated to one task. So the USB supply comes in. It's got a little decoupling capacitor for stability across it. It's got that potential divider that uh, provides an input to the unit to tell it that it is charging. Uh, the output has, it's really simple, that 330 ohm resistor for the LED. It's got the motor with the diode across it. And then it's got, on that output, it's got the decoupling capacitor for stability for the uh, fairly low capacity cell. It's got the push button to the zero volt rail for the modes. And then it's got that 10K resistor. Now, I put it in charge and it was charging at 400 milliamps. I bridged this with another 10K resistor. The charge current did not change, so it's not affecting the charge current. I then put some LEDs in place of the motor and uh, put it to its like pulsing on and off mode and then I dabbed the 10k resistor across this again to see if it changed the speed of operation. No, it didn't. So this is just for some internal reference here. I'm not really sure what it's for. Another odd thing that happened is that during the testing, I just basically, I didn't like this little connector here because it does short out. Let me show you it shorting out. I shall grab a little dinky meter that's got croc clips on it, and a fairly loud continuity test. Loudish, not that loud. I shall put the leads on to this. And when you push this connector in, it shorts out on the way in, and presumably on the way back out as well. And the fact it shorts on the way back out as well might be actually quite important for this thing. This isn't great because uh, many devices, USB charge devices, don't like being short-circuited. Some of the cheap power supplies will go kabim when you short-circuit them. Uh, some power banks will just lock out. Some may go up in smoke, depending on the quality of the circuitry. But here's the odd thing. Instead of that connector, I tapped, cut the USB lead, and I tapped it just across the USB connectors. And I plugged it into charge, and when you plug it into charge, let me just grab a power bank here. When you plug it into charge, that LED there starts flashing on and off to show it's charging. And then I unplugged it, and uh, now it's not flashing, but it kept flashing that LED. Now, it's possible it was residual charge across that capacitor, and that maybe over time these resistors would have discharged that to the point it cut off but even with a 10k resistor across that it didn't do it even with 4.7k resistor across that it didn't cut out it just kept flashing 
And in the end, I ended up putting a 1K resistor across the USB input. And that's the only point that when you unplugged it, it would come out of the charging mode. It almost seems like it's a little quirk, a little design error or something. Or maybe a fault, I'm not really sure. Um, but that kind of fixed it. Very strange. But there we have it. There's not really much to say, is there? It's all down to one chip. And it's doing the bulk of the work. It is quite intriguing that the back of that chip has that little uh, heat transfer plane, I guess, substrate, you could say. But that is being actually connected to the motor here. That's connected effectively to this pin here for the uh, whatever load is connected. And I'm guessing ultimately it probably is just a... Uh, for a heat sink for an internal transistor for whatever loads connected but that is it it's fairly junky it uh, it kind of i suppose it works strangely low capacity cell even a smaller cell out of a disposable one of these type of devices that you puff on can't say what it is because of algorithms uh, but it uh, even that would have like it's although it's smaller than the cell that was in it it would have a capacity of somewhere between two and three times the capacity of that cell so uh, very much a low spec cell but uh, there we have it uh, it's an interesting orange juicer or hysteria relief device um, and interesting that they've just compressed all the circuitry down to one chip that does the charge control of the lithium cell, topping out at 4.2 volts uh, and um, switching the loads and uh, controlling the patterns. Interesting device, although, to be honest, quirky as well, but nonetheless quite interesting.